Hi guys, welcome back to Ian's Coral Reef and it's time for a five month update on the Red Sea 525XXL. Alright, so it's been five months since I've set up this tank and I've got to say, I can't be happier. It's um, it's an amazing tank, um, obviously because I upgrade, well, I transferred everything from my old tank into it, so it's not a typical five months update. Um, so let's start on this side here, you can see I've got a few uh, new corals here that are growing in nicely. Um, this Hysterix is just insane. It's uh, actually bigger than my head. Um, I broke off quite a lot of it when I was moving, so there's a few little bits just in there that are just, um, well, they sort of died off, but they're kind of recovering now. Um, and what's really nice is once I, when I get all the elements properly on point, um, if you see down here, I was looking yesterday, yeah, just around here, um, some of these branches here, they have like almost a yellowy base to them as well. Um, and I think because it's got such a fast growth pattern to it that sometimes the speed of the growth out sort of does the colour but I'd like to try and work on getting this to be its best kind of colour. Okay, and I've also got my uh, cheap Jaboa Wave Maker. I think it's about the biggest one they do. Um, I've had this for years, so I've popped this at this end. Seems to work really well for me. Um, lots of frags at the back there. Um, this are actually three types of um, purple stylo here well this is more like a bluey green slightly more fuzzy type and then underneath here is more of a purple and then on the top was another bluey one because it's got slightly different growth patterns they're probably just from different areas or um, well, I'm not quite sure but they don't um, they don't mind being popped on top of each other so I've had no coral warfare and I quite like the way it looks having three different types growing in on there I mean the polyp extension on this one is insane um, and it does sometimes have like a greeny base to it sort of when they all uh, interact I've got some of my favourite pallies here which just look I mean I bought one of these and They've spread quite nicely. Let's get this to focus properly. And then along with these pallies as well. And these are really pretty, really nice bright green mouths. And then I've also got these pallies as well, which I think are quite underrated. Like I really love the sort of the camouflage pattern on these guys. I've got a real fuzzy chunk of John Deere and then its little cousin next to it, which is a similar, uh, same coral, but different colors with the bright orange mouths and the purple. And uh, you can see where the little white bit is. Um, there was actually a, a whole section missing there, so it's just filled in nicely. This strawberry shortcake is, well, it was massive. I've fragged loads of it up, but it's looking pretty cool. Sometimes it's slightly pinker on the mouths, at the moment it's looking a little bit on the greener side, but I've, yeah, I love it. I love the fact it's sort of more tabling. And then next to that I've got this, uh, it was another type of strawberry shortcake. I'm not sure what type it is, but it's got much larger mouths, they sort of sway, it's a lot more of a, it's a fuzzy stick. Right, I've got my uh, little trumpets there, which funny enough, really did nothing in my other tank they sort of stayed as just one and as you can see I've got multiple heads turning up here it's weird how things do differently in different tanks and again the same as like the trumpets this funny acro here which has got sort of a, a deep 
green, almost turquoise base with these purple mouths. That did nothing in my old tank and is uh, really starting to come in its own in this one. Now this coral here is a, a real reminder of why never to take out uh, if corals have died. It died on the move, um, really sort of died back and you can see the non green green star polyps that are all around it um, sort of covered it and I went over it with a bit of a wire brush to scrape back some of these uh, non green green star polyp things and um, yeah look you can see there's life so never throw them away never give up and in the same vein as that I had I never um, I'd taken out all of the red plating Monty um, so it's super strange to see that some is just appearing so there must have been a tiny bit left and when I was moving the rocks around this bits just had enough there was just enough DNA or what have you left to start bringing it back this Millie has to be one of my favorites it's a real bright pink and um, yeah I just like the fact that you get to see some of the movement And this is like my SPS mountain here where you've got this deep water acro which the growth patterns, the way this grows is just insane with its really light green um, base and then almost white tips like kind of just reminds me of everything I think a coral should look like but almost with a sort of a Christmas tree effect. And I've got my green plating behind there, which almost has like a bit of a yellowy kind of rim um, in certain lights, which is really cool. And I love, I just love the fact that you've got them growing on top of each other. Like I like it to look really packed and um, you know, these guys all seem to, you know, tolerate each other, which is good. Good for me anyway. And then we've got my uh, tri-coloured, barley tri-coloured acro here which you can see here I've been chomping away at because it's just absolutely huge. And in here I've got another little uh, sort of violet and green acro, another tabling sort, um, really pretty. Again, I've had a little chop of that one as well. But look at the mouths on this and the color is just insane. I love it. And then you've got my uh, blue tipped stag's horn, which sometimes has blue tips and sometimes has white tips. At the moment they're very pale blue the camera doesn't really pick them up as well but it looks cool now of course there's always something not great so at the back here I've got this purple acro which took a little bit of a beating from my anemones which I'll get to in a minute walked all over it and you can see burnt it and fought with it and has actually killed big chunks of it so I've moved him down here and I've done some fragging so hopefully I can save him and he's always been quite tolerant of different things so I'm thinking he probably will come back because he's got a lot of new growth tips and he looks amazing when he's at his best but funny enough he was actually a coral that came with another coral years ago they used to stick them on the same I think it was like a Indo coral and it had another one next to it so he's kind of purple on one side but then if you take frags from a different side they're kind of green so he's kind of a grafted one so it would be a shame to lose him because I've had him for years you can almost see what I mean by that, by this frag up here. See, it's got that green kind of base. But yet here, the frag that I've put um, in my tank, uh, it's just all purple. I think this is my favorite chalice at the moment. It's sort of got gold lines and then orange mouths, pinks and purples. He's beautiful, we need to get him nice and big. I'm also, fascinated with this chalice I love the fact that it's got some greeny yellowy eyes coming on it as well at the bottom and that's weird because this is a new eye that overgrew where it again got stung you can see here some of the base is uh, showing a bit of recession and that's um, from a couple of weeks ago well not a couple of weeks maybe a month or so ago it got completely stung by the wandering bubble tip and enemies and um, he's recovered really well 
finally got a little bit of growth on this guy. He's sort of splitting and spreading, which is great. I'm completely obsessed with Cyphastria. This is a scrolling Cyphastria, and um, he was a little bit beaten up when I got him. So uh, yeah, his colouring is just really coming out now. He was all pale and bleached out, and now he's a real baby blue with orange mouths with a yellow centre. So he's scrummy. This guy here, I never even put in my tank. He just appeared uh, a few years ago in my forefoot uh, when I my original tank and um, yeah he's just gone insane he's one of my largest colonies I probably had him like four years but considering I never even opted to put him in I love the fact he's got a real yellowy uh, base and then these green and then there are a little a few bluey purple tones in there as well so he's a real mix I have the largest elegance coral which was tiny um, when I got him and I'm thinking that I might have to move him on because he's starting to really take over I've had to pop him right down the back so you can't really see him but I do like the movement that you get which is quite cool and again this war coral I never put in my tank never even bought one but just appeared um, so there must have been some remnants on there on a rock just turned a specific way and it's appeared I love the fact like life just finds a way to quote Jurassic Park so now we come to the newest section of the tank and you can see up here this coral here has been kind of beaten and then I've got four when well, well this one got completely destroyed um, but I've got four well should be five so I've got one two three four little tiny bit and then this guy here so this is a forest fire digi that's just a normal red digi then you've got a purple a green and this kind of lilac-y beige and he does almost have like pink tips once it gets growing he's like he's really interesting so this used to be where my bubble tip had well had split and gone crazy so I'm gonna turn this into a little digi forest because my bubble tip I shall show you is in a little quarantine box so he'd actually split into two um, there's probably three in there now because unfortunately he didn't come out he didn't have the smoothest of exits. I've put one in the TMC tank and um, this guy, uh, the one that came out whole, uh, went into the TMC tank, but this guy was ripped to shreds and I felt awful. Um, so what I did was I've popped him in this, um, I don't know, this little prison, uh, just to sort of see if it would heal, but not, you know, fly around and get blended. So hopefully, he's really puffed up, and um, I've put in tiny little bits of um, rock rubble, so I might even have lots of tiny little bubble tips for, well, to get rid of, as you can see, like the lid blows with the, with the waves. And then I've got this gold Millie which looks oh, just stunning from the top. I'll try and get some top down view as well. But oh my God, I just love it. And then I've got this little guy here, which if I can zoom in, is just a normal red plating Monty, but actually has some green in him. So if I can get a top down view, I don't know how much of the green's gonna actually come out in the video, because he's tiny. But so he's almost like a grafted. So it'll be interested to see how he grows out, if he grows out. And so here I've got my little zoa garden with these red zoas. Oh look, a little random non-green green star polyp trying to fight their way in there. I need to pick them out. I've got these funny little ones. I like these little greeny. They're kind of green with a orange mouth. And then you've got all these daft moles that have just gone insane. And what's the weird thing with these is they sort of change colour. So you've got ones that have got like this glittery effect and then you've got ones that are really dark. Um, all this, all off the same initial frag, but just lots of different variations. 
And we've got more of these little ones here. I'm hoping these ones will spread a little bit more. And then there's this little turban here I'm hoping will outcompete these non green green star pollock okay, things. Okay, so now this takes me to the sum where I've still got my favorite reactor running rower force. I change, I've been changing a smaller amount on a Wednesday and on a Sunday, which I found works a little bit better than just uh, doing it every week. Um, I've got some frags of everything going on in here, which is quite cool. My new little frag station, and I've got some mushrooms that I wanna grow out and stick in the TMC. And then I've got my little imprisoned clownfish, which now there's a bubble tip in the TMC. I think I'm going to put him and um, one of the little clownfish, her, sorry, I should say, and one of the little clownfish in the TMC, because I do like clownfish. Um, then at the back here, we've got the Quantum still doing an epic job. I've one of my favourite skimmers on this size tank. Um, I've got my Cheeto or whatever you want to call it growing in the back uh, all my probes and things there then I've got my um, Don't know if you can see dosing from my Calcium reactor there's my steady flow Got my auto top up now something I do that's a little bit different here is I've got four cups and then I've got some filter wool, which I just literally stick in there and then change it every Wednesday and Sunday. Um, I find that makes life a lot easier um, because I hate filter socks. Well, I hate washing them and everything like that. So that just saves me a little bit of time. Yeah, something's cool. And then in my other cupboard, I've got everything squeezed in. Here's the calcium reactor, just cooking everything. I've got my Apex EBA and then my dosing pump there for them. So that just feeds everything. Um, probably need to change the CO2 soon because it's normally every three months. I've got my Red Sea ABCD reef elements there, which I've been trying to keep on top of because I really want to concentrate on some color in this tank. And there we go. Quite a nice little uh, bottom up view there of everything. And lights, I've still got this um, pendulous hanger which has got three XR30 um, Gen 4s and then it's got four T5 bulbs. But I really want to change this one to more of an itinic because I think it promotes algae growth on the front of the glass um, because I think I've just got like a natural daylight bulb in there for some reason. And then I've got my auto feeder. So that's set for the maximum amount of times a day just so we can keep these guys fed. So what I thought I'd do is I thought I'd just finish off with a little uh, top down view of everything. So 
So I think all in all, I'm really, really, really impressed um, with how well this tank's done over the last four, uh, five months from uh, moving everything out from the uh, the basement. So, um, yeah, I think if there was one thing I could change, it would be not having the non sort of green, green style polyps everywhere. But to be fair, scraping them away with like a, a sort of a toothbrush, like a metal toothbrush, gives the other coral then room to grow and they don't tend to grow over living corals, they're sort of in between some of the zoas, but that's about it, but you can pick them out. So, you know, really it's probably on me, I need to do it a little bit more. But yeah, so super happy with this tank. So my next update's gonna be on the new water box. So yeah, see you soon.